Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing the clinical prediction rule for whether hip mobilizations will help somebody with knee osteoarthritis. And this comes from a paper, you can see it here, Development of a Clinical Prediction Rule to Identify Patients with Knee Pain and Clinical Evidence of Knee OA Who Demonstrate a Favorable Short-Term Response to Hip Mobilizations. So the gist of this is when you're making a clinical prediction rule, you measure a bunch of things. They could be subjective reports by the patient, they could be objective findings, and then you correlate those with whether or not they were associated with a positive response to treatment or negative or no response to treatment. You get a bunch of sensitivities and you get a bunch of specificities, and then they look at everything and they try to find the items which end up being criteria that are the strongest predictors of whether or not the intervention helps with the given problem. In this case, whether hip mobilizations help with people with knee arthritis. And so they were ultimately able to boil this down to five criteria that help predict this. And those are as follows. Ipsilateral anterior thigh pain, intermittent hip or groin pain, and I believe in the actual paper there was numbness included in this as well, not just pain. Pain with ipsilateral hip distraction, and that is pain in the hip, not necessarily pain in the knee. Ipsilateral knee flexion passive range of motion less than 122 degrees, and ipsilateral hip medial or internal rotation passive range of motion less than 17 degrees. And in general, when they look at these criteria, they're the ones with both the highest specificities and the highest sensitivities. So a patient comes in with knee osteoarthritis and pain. And other than that, you don't know anything else about them. Okay, that's all you know, they have knee arthritis. The probability or pretest probability that a hip mobilization will help their knee arthritis and pain is 68%. Now, the nice thing about this clinical prediction rule is that you don't need a lot of these to be positive to jump up the post-test probability that the hip mobilization will help them. In fact, if you look at these, if just one out of five of these are positive, the post-test probability jumps up to 92%. In other words, if one of these is positive, and even if four of them are negative, there's a 92% chance that the hip mobilizations will help their knee OA, really the pain in their knee OA. And a couple of these that I've seen are very commonly positive are this one, limited hip internal rotation. Um, there are some people, particularly men, who have a significant limitation in this hip mobility. And also uh, a passive knee flexion, range of motion being limited, that's another really common one, especially when the arthritis is fairly advanced. So you only need one of them and it jumps that probability of success up to 92%. If two of them are positive, the probability jumps up to 97%. So if even one of these, but especially two are positive, it is definitely in your interest to perform hip mobilizations. And you can see some examples in here um, that were included in the treatments in this study. Uh, they did caudal glides, they did AP glides, they did PA glides, and then they did PA glides with some sort of flexion, abduction, or external rotation at the hip. Now interestingly, they did not include lateral hip mobilizations. This is actually the variation that I use in the clinic. I find it to be really, really useful for most people. Um, it's easy to set up. You can do it with the strap or a towel. You can do it manually. But I find that lateral hip distractions tend to be very useful, and I have had success with those. But just understand that in this study that determined the clinical prediction rule, they did not actually use lateral mobilizations at the hip. All right. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how certain features of the objective exam can help determine whether or not hip mobilizations will be useful in helping a patient's knee pain who also has knee arthritis. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much.